Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We're continuing taking a look at some of these early games in 2022. And we're taking a look at the backyard brawl. West Virginia going on the road to Pitt. Aside of having one of the better rivalry names in college football, this game has absolutely a ton of storylines. We've previewed both West Virginia and Pitt. We like both teams before we get into it. Just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support you guys have shown the channel. If you guys do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And more importantly, let us know in the comment section who you guys got in this game. Give the fellas a winner. We're trying to get off the college football season on a hot start. Still, I'm going to kick it off to you. What are your early reads on this game? I think this game is going to be super low scoring. That's just like my early hunch, I mm. think. You got a lot of shake up on both sides. A lot both sides lost pretty much their the drivers of their offense with the running back from West Virginia and obviously the quarterback, offensive coordinator, and top wide out at Pitt. So I think you have a lot of turnover. And, and and Pitt's offense obviously was like kind of an anomaly last year. I think West Virginia had a good offense, not great. And they're probably trying to get it rolling a little bit, but I just see a very low scoring football game. Yeah, and I, I think I'm nervous for Pitt in the sense that you heard Pat Narduzzi on a hot mic getting recorded, kind of getting after Mark Whipple saying they did not run the football enough. And I'm thinking to myself, you just had the best season you've had in your tenure. Your offense was top 10 in the country. What, what are you complaining about the offense? And I think you're going to see Pat Narduzzi, a more traditional Pat Narduzzi offense. They bring in Frank Signetti from BC and you're going to see a very conservative pit offense that is playing complementary football to a very, very good defense that they have. And so I'm with you. A lot of turnover on both sides of the – or both offenses for both teams. I do think you're going to see kind of a rockier start on offense for both of them. I mean, in, in fairness to Narduzzi, like their team is kind of built more to – Yes. They're not built like they were last year. I mean, they're not – they don't have Kenny Pickett. Like Keaton Slovis – you might hope he can stabilize it a little bit, but he's not in Kenny Pickett's league and obviously losing Addison. So, But what they do have is an offensive line that I think is very good and in and, and a defense that's going to be very good. So I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to get after Narduzzi for switching up. I don't know why he's complaining about the offense last year. It was, it was like awesome. But I think their, their team's built to play that ground and pound Narduzzi Michigan State football. Like, I don't – and I just don't see them airing it out as as aggressively. It's just they don't have the players to do it. Yeah, and I think this I think this game comes down to a couple things. One, which kind of what we talked about, which transfer quarterback, JT Daniels or Keaton Slovis, settles into that offense more. You might see Keaton Slovis settling quicker because he had the whole spring. JT Daniels just coming in for the summer. But that's the big that's the biggest question is which quarterback looks more set in this offense. And the second big matchup that I see is a West Virginia offensive line that I think will be pretty damn good this year, but struggled last year. They get all their guys back, guys like Zach Frazier, Doug Nestor, guys that I really like, versus a pit defensive line that's one of the best in the country, headlined by Kalijah Kansi, Baldonado, Dustin Alexander, and then Servosia Dennis coming in from that linebacker spot. Can West Virginia protect JT Daniels because JT is not a guy that can make stuff happen outside the pocket? You need to give him a clean pocket, and then he'll deliver some accurate footballs. Yeah, I mean, that's the crux of the issue is you have a, a defense at Pitt that I, I just don't see how anyone's going to be able to really move it that great on them because you do have probably potentially four guys who are, are professionals on that offensive oh, yeah. defensive line and, like, maybe a couple high picks too. So I don't I don't know. I don't think either quarterback's great, frankly. I think they've both had their shots in college, both. It hasn't worked out wherever they've been, and I get a little hesitant to think like your second, third, fourth options are going to maybe turn it around. So I think they're both okay, but not explosive. A lot of the skill from last year is gone from both teams, and I don't know. We'll see. I Again, I think when you look at the spread, though, it's not like I don't know if Pitt's going to cover it easily. Hey, that's okay. So let's get into our picks. West Virginia has some playmakers on offense that I, I, I would like to see emerge. Caden Prather's a guy that doing the 2022 season preview for the Mountaineers popped up a lot. People like him a lot. Very talented, long athlete. And then Lynn J. Dixon coming in from Clemson. Really shaky running back. I think that he can 
kind of provide some explosive plays for them. Now, talking about the spread, Pitt comes in as a seven-point favorites. They're at home. I don't see this game being more than a touchdown either way. This game is going to be close. It's a rivalry game. You have two new quarterbacks. You have two new OCs on both sides. I just don't see any team really thumping the other team and running away with this game. Yeah, and that's that's exactly my thought. I think it's like a good point to bring up. Like early rivalry games in a season like this, I think is destined for a very low score. I think, yeah, it'll probably just live up to what its name is. The backyard ball. It's yeah. a little sloppy. It's it'll be what it'll be. And I, I think that's okay. I think that's okay, frankly, for Pitt to win the game. Yes. I don't think it's so good for them to, to cover seven points. Yeah, and I'm probably not laying with either side here, but know what I really do like is the under in this game. I think when you look at – I think this Pitt offense is just a little overrated from last year. You look at that matchup predictor, Vegas is high on Pitt. I think they have them at eight and a half wins. and Not that I'm low on Pitt, but I'm lower on how explosive that offense will be. I think it's going to look a lot more like the traditional Pat Narduzzi teams that they're going to run the ball, they're going to limit the possessions, and they're going to play good defense. And that's a recipe that's worked. And Pitt's going to be a good team this year. It's just not going to look the same as it was last year. And for that reason, I do like the under. Because I don't see West Virginia scoring a lot of points on this very, very good Pitt defense. But I also don't see Pitt running up the score on offense either. Because I think they're going to revert more back to that complimentary game where we're going to run the ball, we're going to limit those possessions, and we're going to keep this a close game. Yeah, and, and if you watch how West Virginia plays defense, like they do play a very softer three down lineman, eight in the second or eight guys, kind of deep in in, in the yeah. style. So they're playing a style that's not conducive for explosive plays. Pitt doesn't have explosive capabilities, I don't think this year. But I think you might be able to pound them up a little bit, run it on them, and, and score enough to win, and then. Again, I, yeah, it gets back a little. I see like a 10 to 14, 17 to 14, 16 to 20. I don't like those type of scores. Yeah, it's going to be ugly. And I do, if we're taking a side, I do like the under. You have a guy like Dante Stills, too, on the defensive line for West Virginia, who is bona fide. He probably should have went to the league last year, comes back for another year. He's a bona fide stud. I mean, stat sheet loads it up. He's very disruptive. And I think he'll play a part in maybe slowing down that pit ground attack where. I do think they'll try to establish the run. They return pretty much everyone from that offensive line, two very good running backs. They're going to try to run the football. Can West Virginia stop them? I think they can. They have a lot of transfers on that side of the ball. But either way, I just it goes back to I don't trust either of these quarterbacks. JT Daniels hasn't been able to stay healthy. Keaton Slovis is a reason he transferred from USC, just couldn't get it done. Again, it's not that I dislike either of these teams. I just think week one – rivalry game it's going to be sloppy you have two new quarterbacks you have two new ocs that's my take on this game guys the the one monkey wrench i'll throw into that is graham harrell yeah he should not have been fired from and i get like lincoln riley would have never wanted to have a an existing guy kind of coach the offense but graham harrell is good OC. he's going to be a good head coach someday because i think you saw bones of him being a very good oc on some USC teams that just had no kind of business being good offenses. So I actually, if you're going to get one, like, kind of hope for, for West Virginia is you're reuniting Harold and, and Daniels. And, and Harold's just straight up good. So I think if you're going to have your one, like, little optimism point for – or your notch against the over, either way, however you want to square it, is Graham Harrell as an X factor because he's a guy who just – he shouldn't have been let go at USC. He's awesome. I, t- I totally agree. I just, at the end of the day, I'm going to trust that pit defensive line to get it done as opposed to Graham who I think will be good. And I think that West Virginia offense will surprise a lot of people. I just don't know if it'll happen week one. I think we see that a lot. We're sloppy. Look, think about that Illinois Nebraska game last year. Mm-hmm. Slop fest. Right. And then, I mean, if you throw in some pick sixes, maybe we're toast, but yeah. I don't think these offenses will be able to consistently march the ball downfield. I think you'll see a lot of field goals. I don't think you'll see a lot of points. I like the under in this game. Guys, that'll do it for our preview on the Backyard Brawl. Let us know in the comments section what your pick is. Again, I'm going to bet this game. I don't love anything, but I'm going to be betting it Thursday night. Let me know your picks in the comments section. We'll chop it up, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.